Welcome to my new series, a single player run of East Side Hockey Manager 1.5, using XECK 29 X Premier Pivot Rosters 6.4. I'll be taking control of the Buffalo Sabres, and I will not be using any tactics to make the game a challenge. Furthermore, I'm obligated to honor Jack Eichel's trade request. Patrick Callahan here is going to be the new head coach. I've just fired the entire staff and started finding replacements. When looking for a head coach you want someone with high tactics scores, decent coaching scores for forwards and defensemen, good motivation and decent ability to work with young players. For the assistants you want guys who can motivate but have high scores in the category of coaching they'll be responsible for, such as your goalie coach needs to have a high coaching goalie's score. Mike Valley here seems suitable for taking over as goalie coach. Logan Chambers will be the new forwards coach. And Glenn Wesley will be in charge of the defenseman. For my scouts I go with 10 scouts total. 5 will focus on the entry draft. Another scouts the NHL and there's another assigned to the AHL. There's one with a decent tactics score who'll scout the upcoming competition. There's also one who scouts youth players who are under 17. And finally there's one last scout who acts as a gopher doing all kinds of assignments for me. Early on he'll scout my own team and also the AHL farm team, then he's used as needed. As you can see I'm letting all scouts over the age of 65 go, not because I'm a bastard, although I am a bastard, but really because after the age of 65 they can snap retire on you at the end of any season, and I don't want to be scrambling to hire new scouts. Starting around August 21st I schedule a series of exhibition games, typically 6 to 8 against 3 or 4 teams in a series of double headers. The first exhibition game happens mid-training camp, and the rest begin as soon as camp ends. Now it's time to look at the reserve list and see what I have in stock for prospects, and it's actually not good at all. In fact it ends up being a culling. Even my best prospect Owen Power is a little on the slow side. Bottom line is this is going to be a complete organizational rebuild, and it's not going to be pretty. There will be a lot of losing before there's any winning. Now it's September and I'm calling up everyone from the farm team to participate in training camp. I'm also inviting any remaining unsigned prospects to participate as well. With so many players called up, you should be able to divide camp into four teams. Throughout camp you'll get coaches' reports, and they can be useful with helping you identify which young players are about to break out. If you've invited your unsigned prospects to camp your coach will offer an evaluation for everyone. I start cutting players as soon as camp ends. If the player can be sent back to junior, then I do just that because prospects are early ready year one after being drafted, in fact most will take seasons to develop. Then you can cut the goalies that you won't be keeping on the main roster. After every pair of exhibition games I cut a few more players until there's maybe no more than three extra players left to cut, and I make those final cuts the day of game one. But this season it's almost meaningless because the team will suck no matter what. This season's going to be a total tank job and sell-off with draft picks coming back our way. Now that we're in October it's time to send out the entry draft scouts. I also get my gopher to start scouting the main roster and the farm team. I send the entry draft scouts on two-month assignments, and because I anticipate having multiple first-round picks, they'll be paying attention to the better players, rather than looking for unknowns. I repeat this again in December and February, giving these scouts at least three passes at the entry draft.
we're now at game 1 and I'll be running 5 day sims between any lineup adjustments. We're going to skip straight ahead to game 20 so we can evaluate where the team stands and decide on our approach going forward. Twenty games in and we know where things stand, exactly where I expected them to. We're in full sell-off mode, and I want first round picks or A plus quality prospects. Basically anyone above the age of 24 can go. First we'll take a look at the league wide player stats, but after we're going to set up our team needs. We're going full rebuild through draft, and we're looking for hot prospects at all positions except defense. Defense is the one position where things don't look so bleak for us, and that's good since I build from the net out and up the middle. Doing this in a single player game hopefully helps the game come up with offers you might be interested in. Then I set each older player's status to being as on the trade block. You can also just offer the player, but I find the game sends you low ball offers when you try that. I've been running through the roster and found a pleasant surprise. Henry here is a 22-year-old right defenseman, and is sporting an average rating of 7.21, and that's just outstanding on this shitty team. I love that for all the mess this team is right now it's at least got some promising young prospects on defense already. All I want this draft are exciting forwards, space monkeys to lead the team to glory. Ok it's time to do a little scouting. For me there's one hard rule to scouting and drafting, and that's to almost never draft any skater possessing a speed score of less than 12. Now if it's an 11 and said skater otherwise looks fantastic then yes you can take a chance on him, because these stats can improve, but generally I want speedy space monkeys on my roster. After speed you want someone possessing an influence of at least 8, but the rest is just personal preference. Shane Wright is the prize of this draft, a potential star center to replace Jack Eichel, after we figure out a trade for him. To help make drafting easy you can use the reports option that allows you to view your scouts recommendations quickly. It was Nashville who stepped up first and offered me two third round picks for a Lofsen. Seeing there's a shot of getting a second out of this deal, I responded with the counter offer that you see here which got accepted. The Lofsen was only a depth player, and the second and third round picks that I'm getting back for him might get flipped later into something even better. The tank job is real people. I can hear the cast of Spaceballs shouting suck suck, suck, in my head right now while witnessing all this losing. I must apologize for the standings right here because it seems I forgot to switch over to the Western Conference, so all you're getting is the Eastern Conference followed by the player stats. It's okay the West can wait, it's not like we're making the playoffs. On January 1st, or thereabouts, I start signing the next batch of drafted prospects. There's no standouts this year, but next year there'll be Owen Power who I'd noticed has been improving his speed, which was the one bit of criticism I had about him.
I think this ends the episode, next time we'll finish the season off and find our space monkeys. Thanks for watching.